Hi, welcome to this Corporate Miles video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the Fibonacci practice questions. If you need any extra help on Fibonacci sequences, if you go to corporatemiles.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video 287A, that's the video tutorial on Fibonacci sequences. Alternatively, you can just scan this QR code. But in this video, I'm going to go through the practice questions and I'm going to go through their answers, so let's get started. So question number one. Question number one says, the next term in the sequence below is found by adding the two previous terms. So as you can see, if we add the first two terms, 10 plus 15, we get 25. So if we want to find the next term, the fourth term, we're going to add the second and third term. We're going to add these two terms, the two terms before it. So we're going to do 15 plus 25. So 15 plus 25. And 15 plus 25 is equal to 40. So that means the next term is 40. And if we want to find the next term, well, we're going to add 25 and 40. So we're going to do 25 plus 40 is equal to 65. So our next two terms were 40 and 65. So with a Fibonacci sequence, to find the next term, you add the two previous terms. That's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number two. So question number two says, the next term in this Fibonacci sequence is found by adding the two previous terms. Work out the next two terms. So we've got, we start off with two and two. Well, two plus two is equal to four. Two plus four is equal to six. 4 plus 6 is equal to 10, and 6 plus 10 is equal to 16. So our next two terms would be 10 and 16. Okay, let's have a look at question number 3. So question number 3 says, here are the first five terms of a Fibonacci sequence, and we start off with 3, 4, 7, 11, and 18. And let's just check it. 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. 4 plus 7 is equal to 11. 7 plus 11 is equal to 18. 11 plus 18 is equal to 29, so 11 plus plus 18 is equal to 29. And finally, to get the next term, we're going to do 18 plus 29. And 18 plus 29 is equal to 47. So our next two terms are 29 and 47. Okay, let's have a look at question number four. So question number four. Question number four says, a Fibonacci sequence starts two, negative seven. Work out the next two terms. Well, to find the third term, we're going to add the first and the second term. So we're going to do 2 plus negative 7. Well, 2 plus negative 7. When we add negative 7, instead of going up 7, we're going to go down 7. So we're going to do 2 take away 7. And 2 take away 7 is equal to minus 5, or negative 5. So the next term would be negative 5. Or another way to think of it, if you're at negative 7, and you add 2, you go back up 2, so you get to negative 5. Now, to find our fourth term, our next term, we're going to do negative 7 plus negative 5. So negative 7 plus negative negative 5. And whenever we add a negative number, remember, it doesn't go up, it goes down, so we're going to do negative 7, and then instead of going up 5, we're going to go down 5, so that'll bring us down to negative 12. So our next term would be negative 12. So the next two terms in the sequence would be negative 5 and negative 12. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 5. And question number 5 is a calculator question, and it says here are the first three terms of a Fibonacci sequence. So we've got 235, 366 and 601. We've been asked to write down the next two terms of this sequence. So let's just check it. To get our next term, our 601, it should be 235 plus 366. And that is correct. So to get the next term, we're going to add the 366 and the 201, the two previous terms. So 366 plus 601 is equal to 967. And now, so that means our next term would be 967. And to get the next one, and we're going to add our 601 and our 967. So 601 plus 967, 1,568. So the next two terms of our Fibonacci sequence were 967 and 1,568. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Question number six. So question number six is a bit different than the ones we've done so far because what we're actually being given is we've been given the fourth term and the fifth term and we've got to work out the three terms before those, the first three terms of the sequence. So to get this 31, we would have added together this number and our 20. This number plus 20 is equal to 31. That means this number must be 11. Now, if we get rid of those boxes, we know that term is equal to 11. Now to get our 20, we must have done this number plus 11. And this number plus 11 is equal to 20, so this number has to be 9. And finally, to get our 11, we would have added this number and 9 to get 11, so this number would have to be 2. And let's just check it. 2 plus 9 is equal to 11. 9 plus 11 is equal to 20. 11 plus 20 is equal to 31, and so on. So the first three terms of our sequence were 2, 9, and 11. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Question number 7. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number seven. So question number seven says, the first and fourth terms of a Fibonacci sequence are shown, and we've got to find the second term of the sequence. We've got to find this term. 
So to get this 27, we would have added these two numbers together. So this number plus this number is equal to 27. But it doesn't help us because, you know, you could be 26 and 1. We're not entirely sure what they could be. But what we do know is we start off with 1. So 1 plus this number is equal to that number. Let's call this number Y. Let's just call it a letter Y. Okay. So that means that 1 plus Y is equal to this number. So this that means that this number must be 1 plus Y. So 1 plus Y. Because if we add these two together, we get 1 plus Y. Now, to get 27, we're going to have to add these two together. So if we add our y and our 1 plus y, we're going to get 27. So let's add and see what we get. So y plus 1 plus y, so adding these two terms together. Well, y plus y is equal to 2y, so that's 2y. And then we've got our plus 1. So this term plus this term would have to be equal to 2y plus 1. But we know that's equal to 27, so let's write that down. 2y plus 1 is equal to 27. And now we can just take 1 away from both sides of our equation. So take away 1 and take away 1, and that leaves us with 2y equals 26. And divide by 2, and divide by 2, and that's equal. that gives us y equals 13. So that means that this number must be 13, and this number is 1 more than that number, so it must be 14. And let's just check our answer. 1 plus 13 is equal to 14, and 13 plus 14 is equal to 27, so that's right. So what I've done in this question was, I just let the second term be equal to y. I then said 1 plus y would have to be the next term. And then I said if I add these two together, which is 2y plus 1, that has to be equal to 27, and I've solved it. Now, there may have been other ways you could have done that question. You could have tried numbers. You know, you could have done, you know, 1 plus 10, that's equal to 11, and then seen that's not big enough, and you could use maybe a trial and error type approach to it. Uh, but that's the approach that I've used. So the second term of the sequence is equal to 13. Okay, question number eight. Question number eight says, the fifth and the sixth terms of a Fibonacci sequence are shown below. So we've got zero is the fifth term, and four is the sixth term. And we've been asked to find the first term of the sequence this term. So let's have a look. Well, this number plus zero is equal to four. Well, that means that that must be four, because four plus zero is equal to four. Now, to get zero, this number plus four is equal to zero. Well, if it's something plus four is equal to zero, that means the number must be negative four, because negative four plus four is equal to zero. Now, I'm moving backwards to get our 4. That means that this number plus negative 4 is equal to 4. Well, if you're adding negative 4, it's going to come down 4. So that means this number must be 8. Let's just check it. 8 plus negative 4. Well, that's going to be 8 minus 4, which is 4. Fantastic. And finally, to get this number, well, that's going to be the first number plus the second number is equal to negative 4. Well, we've gone up 8, and we've got to negative 4. So that means that this number must be negative 12. So that means that our first term is negative 12. And let's just check it and check we've got it right. Negative 12 plus 8. Well, negative 12 plus 8 is negative 4. 8 plus negative 4 would be 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is equal to 0. And 4 plus 0 is equal to 4. So that's it. Yeah. Okay, let's have a look at question number nine. So question number nine, we've got some algebraic terms here. And we've been told the first three terms of a Fibonacci sequence are x, 3x and 4x. Well, that makes sense because x plus 3x is 4x. Well, let's find the fourth term. So 3x plus 4x. Well, 3x plus 4x would be 7x's. And then finally, to get the fifth term, we need to do add these two terms to so 4x's plus 7x's would be 11x's. So the fifth term would be 11x. And that's it. Okay, question number 10. So question number 10 says, here are the first two terms of a Fibonacci sequence. So we've got y and 6. And we've been asked to find the fourth term of the sequence. So we don't want the third term. We want the fourth term this term. So to get the third term, we would do y plus 6. Well, that's just going to be y plus 6 because we don't actually know what the value of y is. So it would just be y plus 6. And then to get our fourth term, well, we're going to add the second term and the third term. So we're going to add together 6 and y plus 6. So if we're adding 6 and y plus 6 together, we're going to add our numbers. So 6 plus 6 is 12. And also we've got y, so it's going to be y plus 12. Or if we had y plus 6 and we add another 6, that would be y plus 12. So the fourth term in the sequence would be y plus 12. Okay, so question number 11. So question number 11 says the third term of a Fibonacci sequence is negative 12. And the fifth term of the same sequence is 41. Work out the first term. So we've got the first term, then we've got the second term. We've got the third term, that's negative 12. We've got the fourth term, and then we've got the fifth term, which is 41. So we want to work out the first term. Well, let's work out the fourth term to begin with, because negative 12 plus something must give us 41. Now, if we're at negative 12 and we want to go up to 41, well, we're going to be adding on 53 there. And let's just check that. Negative 12 plus 12 would bring us to 0 plus another 41 would bring us up to 41. So that means that that must be 53. So our fourth term is 53. Now to get our second term, now we know that this number plus negative 12 will be 53. Now if we're adding negative 12, it's going down 12. So that means that this number must be 65. 
And finally, to get our first term, well, we know that this number, plus 65, is negative 12. Well, if we added 65 and it's only gone up to negative 12, this must be quite a low number. It's going to be negative 77. And that's it. So the first term of the sequence is negative 77. Okay, question number 12. Question number 12 says, shown below are the first two terms of a Fibonacci sequence. So we've got x and y, and we've been asked to work out an expression for the fourth term in the sequence. So x plus y will be our third term, because it's x plus y is our third term, adding them together. And to get our fourth term, we need to add the second term and the third term, so adding these two terms together. Well, if we've got an x, and we add a y, and we add another y, that'll be x plus 2y's. And so our answer would be x plus 2y. And just to go through that again, we start off with x plus y, and adding them together is just x plus y. And then to find our next term, we add the two terms before, so we're going to add our x plus y and another y, so it's going to be x plus 2y. So question number 13 says, the first term of a Fibonacci sequence is x, so the first term is x. The third term is 2y, so we don't know the second term, but we know the third term is 2y. And we've been asked to work out an expression for the fifth term. Okay, so let's first of all find the second term of the sequence. So whenever we add x and this term together, we get 2y. Now if we add x and this term together to get 2y, that means we must have already have a 2y there. But also, there's no x in that third term, so that means whenever we add our x and whatever it is, we get 0. So it's going to have to be 2y minus x. So it means that our second term would have to be 2y minus x. And let's just check that. If we had 2y minus x and we add x, that would give us 2y. Okay, to get our next term, our fourth term, we're going to have to add the second term and the third term together. Well, 2y plus 2y is 4y, and we've still got our negative x, or minus x. And finally, to get our fifth term in the sequence, we're going to add together the third term and the fourth term. So 2y plus 2y is 6y, and then we've got our minus x. So that means that our fifth term would be 6y minus x. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 14. So question number 14 says, the second term of a Fibonacci sequence is 27, and the fourth term is 60, and we've been asked to find the sum of the first term, the third term, and the fifth term. So what we need to do is work out what the first term, the third term, and the fifth term are, and then add them together. So let's start off by finding out our third term, because 60 is equal to 27 plus something. So 27 plus 33 is equal to 60. And I could just check that by doing 60 take away 27, and that's equal to 33. So that means that the third term is equal to 33. Now let's find our first term. A number plus 27 is equal to 33, so that number has to be 6. And again, we can check it. We can do 33 take away 27, and that's equal to 6. And then finally, to get our last term, if we do 33 plus 60, well, that's going to be 93. So 33 plus 60 is equal to 93. So we've got our first term, our third term, and our fifth term, and we've been asked to find the sum of them. And in maths, the word sum means to add up. So we're going to have to do 93 plus 33 plus 6. And when we add those together, we get 3 plus 3 is equal to 6, plus 6 is equal to 12. So let's put our 2 down and carry our 1. 9 plus 3 is equal to 12, plus 1 is 13. So the answer would be 132. So 132. Okay, let's have a look at question number 15. So question number 15 says, here are the first three terms of a Fibonacci sequence. 3x, 4x, 7x. And we've been told the difference between the third term, so that's that term, and the sixth term. So not that one, not that one, but this one, the sixth term. The difference between this term and this term is 132. And we've been asked to find the value for x. So let's find out what these terms are in, in terms of x to begin with. So we've done 3x plus 4x is 7x. 4x plus 7x is 11x, 7x plus 11x would be 18x, and 11x plus 18x is equal to 29x. So the third term is equal to 7x, and the sixth term is equal to 29x. We're told the difference between them is 132. So if we take away those terms, so 29x take away 7x, that gives us 22x. But we know that that's equal to 132. So if we do write 22x equals 132, we can then divide both sides here by 22. So divide by 22 and divide by 22. And that gives us what our value for x is. So our value for x would be 6. And the question says, work out the value of x, and the value would be 6. If you were asked to find out what the terms in the sequence would be, you would just do 3 times x, so that's 3 times 6, 4 times 6, 7 times 6, 11 times 6, and so on. But we were just asked to work out the value for x. Okay, let's have a look at our last question, question number 16. And question number 16 says, the third term and the fourth term of a Fibonacci sequence are 5 sixths and 9 halves. And we've been asked to work out the first term in the sequence, so we've been asked to work out this term. 
So let's first of all find the second term, this term here. So we know that this number plus this number is equal to that number. So if we take away the third term from the fourth term, we can find the second term. So we need to work out nine halves take away five sixths. So to take away fractions, now this is a non-calculator question, so we need to get a common denominator. So if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by three, we get that's equal to 27 sixths and then take away our 5 sixths, and 27 sixths take away 5 sixths would be equal to 22 sixths, 11 thirds. So that means that this term is 11 thirds. So that means the second term in our sequence is 11 thirds. So now let's find our first term in the sequence. Now to find the first term, well we know if we add the first term and the second term together, we can get the third term. So that means that if we take away the second term from the third term, we can get the first term. So we need to do 5 sixths take away 11 thirds. So 5 sixths take away 11 thirds. Now as you can see the denominators, we've got 6 and 3, so let's double this fraction, the top and the bottom, the numerator and the denominator. So we get 5 sixths take away, and doubling these would give us 22 sixths. And 5 sixths take away 22 sixths, so we'll take away the numerators. 5 take away 22 is equal to negative 17, and then our denominator would be 6. So that means that the first term would be minus 17 sixths. So the first term in our sequence is negative 17 over 6, or negative 17 sixths. And that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the Fibonacci practice questions on corporate maths. I really, really hope you found this video useful. If you have liked it, could you please like it? And could you please subscribe to the YouTube channel? Thanks so much, and I really hope that you find this useful. If you do need any extra help in Fibonacci sequences, if you go to corporatemaths.com and scroll down to video 287A, it's a fantastic video tutorial, I think, <laughs> and it'll be really useful in helping you revise Fibonacci. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.